Hello and welcome to another episode of Analyze This. My name is Honey Ogundei and joining me is... Tunji Andrews. And today we're going to be talking about fintech in Nigeria, which is basically financial technology companies in the sector. And this is one of the fastest growing sectors in Nigerian space today, especially when we look at finance and technology. It's basically when you see companies that are doing things differently with tech and finance. So I've seen really cool savings apps. I've seen um, apps that help you get loans. I've seen apps that even help you analyze uh, your spending every month. Um, it's a pretty high growth industry across the world and Nigeria is not left out. So we're going to be breaking it down on this episode of Analyze This. I'm going to be asking Tunji if he's using any one of them because we know he's quite old school. Um, but I'll be bringing him up to date about some of the coolest ones that I've seen. And then later on, we'll bring a guest on who is a member of one of the coolest uh, fintech apps that I've seen recently, uh, websites. And we'll be talking to him more about his business, um, where they see the growth opportunities and where does this all go. And most of all, is our money safe um, if you decide to put it in one of these new fintech apps? So Tunji, fintech app. So fintech or fintech actually in general. So the sector is pretty booming around the world. Like in Europe, everybody was talking about fintech and it's everything from insurance tech to new digital only banks to apps that help you do really cool things with your money, right? Um, I know like Nigerian public sometimes can be a bit wary, you know, with especially with all these sort of Ponzi schemes as well going around. But I really think that it's the future when we look at finance and how we're all going to be banking in the future. What do you think? Are you, um, are you excited by this? Uh, the, the person they called the Disruptor King, uh, King was in Nigeria a couple of weeks ago and he was basically talking about um, the banking of the future. Right. And, and he, I mean, there was so much that, you know, there was this, um, he, he showed uh, this clip of how payments is now in some parts of the world where it's no more you using your card, it's no more you using an app, it's actually voice activated and you're speaking to a, a device and you're saying, you know, order for, uh, order th that socks from Amazon again and it, it does it, you know, automatically. And he was talking about the fact that we're a lot closer to that future than we actually think because, right. you know, FinTech is actually taking leaps and bounds, although he kind of took a stick to a lot of Nigerian, you know, uh, uh, service providers in, in the fact that they're not trying to catch up with what is going on in the world. But I think uh, the FinTech uh, startups in Nigeria, you know, Flutterwave, Pay Paystack, uh, uh, a lot of them are trying to, you know, step into that area. And I think it's it's good. We're still baby steps here compared to the rest of the world, but we're on the right track. Yeah, I think what's really interesting for me, like with fintech, is that in many ways, Africa is also, we're not left behind. I think that we're also at the forefront of, especially with mobile and finance. So M-Pesa is huge in Kenya. It's basically like mobile peer-to-peer -peer payment systems. Um, and so I think that this is for once, like at one stage, the stuff that we innovate or the things, the way that we solve the problems around finance and especially getting the unbanked on especially how we're using technology is really like innovative and i'm happy that you brought up payments because i think that that's another aspect of you know fintech we saw like a company like flutterwave they just closed their series a they raised 10 million dollars mm. this is for a company that is less than two years old which is pretty also amazing e. yeah shout out to e I mean, <laughs> but like that's you know that's pretty impressive because i mean who if you think about it, you can start a company to you and someone's giving you $10 million to go and build out the opportunity and they're just trying to say how to fix payments infrastructure in um, in Africa. I think um, what is really there is the fact that there's, there's the scalability of fintech businesses in Nigeria is very huge because of where we are in the, in the payments spectrum. Because we're still a little bit behind. We've just gotten to the point where we're getting comfortable to... Um, have transactions from one mobile phone to another. Uh, some years ago, people would receive ATM cards and you know cut them in two because they feel, ah, they're about to steal my money. But now we're beginning to accept those things. I was in a um, some sort of um, test meeting where a, a payment, uh, payment company was trying to ask questions about, okay, we're going into the interlands, can this work? And we're saying, if you're going to take it to the rural areas, how are you going to explain to them that if I give you my money, it to enter this phone, then it to go to this person. Right. I mean, it's it's a lot to explain to those kind of people. And you know, a lot of people look at the Impesa ex example and want to compare it to Nigeria. But yeah. the difference is, where Impesa was, there wasn't an alternative. 
Right. There, there wasn't the um, wild, wide scale um, uh, banking system like we have in Nigeria. So it's difficult for people to, you know, people want to walk into a physical place and give somebody their money. Right. And then the person collects it so that if it misses, they can say, it was you I gave the money sure. to, you know, that kind of a thing. So we still have a long way to go, especially in Nigeria in terms of adoption, but it's getting. Yeah, but I mean, I think that the main point is that a majority of people in Nigeria today are still remain on banks, right? So yes. there is still yes. like a huge yes. scope of opportunity. Sure. Like if I think back to sort of four years when I started my business, to be able to accept online payments, you had to go through either InterSwitch or the bank. You had to pay at least 150,000 Naira to mm -hmm. be able to just accept online payments. So we had that and, you know, it was a level changer when you compare us to other online companies that existed. But today, anybody can basically hook up to like a pay stack and be receiving money, have an online processor on your site for free, like right from today. And not only that, the interface is so cool. So it just makes it so much more easier for small businesses to get online and accept payments. So that's really like progress in such a short amount of time. Um, our guest is here and he's actually one of the companies that we've tried out. And he will be talking to us more about that space. But I think the bigger thing is that people always say that Nigerians can't use tech for financial things. But I think like the MMM scenario showed that that was not true. Like basically it was an online platform and everyone managed to find it by themselves, right? But still, it still had that physical element of you going to pay in a bank. And well, why? You could do an online transfer now. Why do you have physical? People still don't. No, you had to have that um, teller as proof. Oh, you had to have a teller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you knew about all... Um... Of course, I knew about it. Yeah, yeah. The thing about it, I never go into the bank anymore. Like, I'm one of those people that if I can do everything online, I will choose to do it online. Like, actually, shout out to banks, though. I, I you are just shouting everybody out. This no, episode. no. Shout really? out to the whole I, financial industry from two I, years. I, I, I made complaints via emails and you know things like um, my uh, AT, uh, POS. Right. Error, you know things like that, and it, it was rectified via email. Yeah. So shout out to you guys from TNG. <laughs> but I think one of the cool things as well we're seeing now is the short codes, right? Like you can use yeah, uh, 737 you know, seven and yeah. transfer money. And I, my friend was telling me now that if you go to the market, Actually, um, yeah. that everybody is using that's that. Traders now are like, yeah, that's let's use it. for a while though. Right? It's just catching But it's up catching people, up really right? quickly. And I've so been using it for a while. That's though. the thing about Nigeria is like really peculiar. Like you think that everybody's been developing like really complicated things and then it turns out to be like a USSD code that we've all been waiting for. To, to <laughs> like we have been innovating. You know? We're innovating. It was like, no guys, all you have to do is just, just and, you know, make it start hash code and we're all going to be like mobile banking. And people yeah. that have collected like $50 million and they come back like, it's just a code. Yeah. So sometimes it. the innovation is still out there. We, we really don't have to overthink it. The Nigerian mm -hmm. consumer is super special. Simple. They just want it direct. Yeah. So we have a guest here with us from one of the coolest uh, fintech companies around, um, Michael Egbo, who is the product manager at kudimoney.com. Uh, welcome to the show. Nice to be here. Great stuff. So can you start by telling us um, what your take is on like the whole fintech space? Is this thing here to stay? Yes, of course. It's here to stay. I mean, um, people want better ways to, you know, just from services online people want easier ways to just go about banking and more efficient ways they want POSs to work better um, they want to feel safe they want to carry cash less you know they they want to to save money receive loans quickly and just you know basically have things work and people just want to um, set up their business in such a way that they can receive money here and there and of course there's a lot of um, you know foreign investors looking at the space um, at the moment so it's, it's a huge space, and I believe it's here to stay. I, I want to say, ask something. I, a lot of the guys uh, in the fintech space are relatively young, and, and I'm trying to, now, trying to look into your mind now. How long-term is the industry and, and the practitioners right now? Well, the truth of the matter is, I mean, people are only just catching up now because it's coming to the financial space. Okay. Traditionally, the tech space is always a long-term term project. So you see um, people coming up with solutions and offering like freemium services and they'll offer free services for about a year, six months. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, the mindset of um, a tech company is always long term. Mm -hmm. And that has moved into the tech space now. So mm -hmm. companies are coming up with products and they're not thinking about just making money instantly. They're thinking about offering value, first of all. Yeah. And then over time, over time, they then start 
you know, um, charging for, for those services. But the initial mindset of most of the fintechs, first of all, is offer value, get people to change the way they do things. And once they've seen value, people will pay for that. Yeah, so it's basically like get a small amount of people to love you and then scale out from there, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So tell us about Kudi Money. So how is, what, what is it that you guys do and why are you different? Um, to put it very simply, what we offer is loans and savings. Um, so for about six months now, we've been giving out loans. We've given, given out over um, hundreds of millions of loans to thousands of people. And a lot of people just hear about us via word of mouth. Right. And they come to us. But we noticed and, you know, through talking to our customers, interviewing them, that what they wanted was not just loans. They wanted a better way to spend. They wanted a better way to understand, you know, how to be more financially responsible. Right. And that's And that's where we started identifying that there was a problem here because i mean take for example um we had this this customer and he came to us like he he earns you know more than five hundred thousand, but at the end of the month all that money is gone right and then he's taking a loan just to pay pay things like yeah, rent yeah. and things like that and then we just started advising him like what would you like and he just wanted to know how to calculate his expenses how to calculate um you know, what he's going to pay at the end of the year and just basically start saving all of that money. Yes. Money and then get to pay that at the end of the year. And if he wants, you know, a loan, maybe to buy a car for a mortgage or things like that, he wants access to that. So we then started to rethink the way we do things. And we started working on something we call the guilt-free spending calculator. So what that does is you just come on our website and we just you just impute all your expenses. And once you're done with that, you say, okay, that's taken care of. And then we say, you want to save extra? And you save. And then we say, hey, you can spend 150K, blow it as much as you like. Right. And, and that's cool. And, and so that's basically what we're about, trying to get people to change the way they spend, change the way they invest, and just become more financially responsible. Tech is expensive. Mm -hmm. FinTech more expensive because it's not just technology it's secure technology mm -hmm. sure. how are you guys funding tech fintech here i mean it takes a lot of sacrifice it's been um from um, developers to you know basically integrating with partners um, but the thing is a, a lot of things are made easier now because of services um, like um, payment gateways now they make it like for example um, um, Paystack makes it easy for us to do direct debits, yeah. mm -hmm. makes and it easy for us to, well, right? and recurrent mm -hmm. payments as well. So a lot of those things are easier now than it would have been um, many years ago. And um, also there are a lot of services like uh, Microsoft Azure that allow us, you know, so we don't need an on-premise um, solution. So, so we can have that on cloud. Main one also is also there for local backups. So, I mean, because of the environment and the changes within the environment, it's it's expensive, yes, but it's a lot cheaper than it would have been um, many years, Adoption. five years ago. Adoption yeah. is another issue. I tried something one uh, on a particular day. I wanted to go out right. and be entirely cashless. Yes. Mm. So I was not going to drive my car. Mm. I was going to take an adventure. taxi. I was going to eat. I was going to do everything using my card. Right. Mm. How did you succeed? It worked. But you see, the problem was I was scared to do it. So it was like, <laughs> hey, guys, I'm going to do this. You know, I actually yeah. even tweeted, I'm going out today and I'm going to be completely cashless today. Mm -hmm. So this is me. But I, I, this is I, me. The opposite of this that, is actually. me that basically understands how yeah, technology yeah. works. How are you getting adoption and getting those local people to you know, use services like yours? Um, it's, it's all about making your services easy to understand, mm. easy for the common man out there, um, how you sell your message, you know. And at the end of the day, the goal is make people more financially responsible. And those are even the unbanked. And mm -hmm. so so it's, it's a challenge for us, but we're always trying to come up with innovative ways and make our solution as simple as possible. You know, easy, easy to use. It, it would feel like you're using an Instagram, for example. Mm -hmm. it, it's self-explanatory. And Instagram and yeah. Facebook, they never had to come and tell anybody in your yeah. hinterland how exactly. to use it. Yeah. Like exactly. everybody is self-taught, uh, mm -hmm. self-taught user. Exactly. So, so, so we we'll, we will take the pain and the time to make sure that our solution is simple. I mean, I heard you say the other day that Star 737, simple solution. But when you think about what goes on behind, integration with technologies like Wizit, uh, you know, it's a lot of 
work to get that done just to offer you that simple solution service, yes. it's a lot of sacrifice but we'll take the pain to make sure that the customers get the value yeah and yeah. how are nigerians sort of you know receptive to services i know like before like someone like my mom with atm cards she's like she, you know she only wants to use a certain atm and she doesn't want to use it in certain places in case somebody photocopies all her details and mm -hmm. clones her card whereas i'm different mm -hmm. like i'll use my card any and everywhere i typically don't carry any cash at all most mm. of the time 98 percent of the time i'm just with my card so i'm quite different to someone like my mom who's still more cash based how are people adopting it or like what's how comfortable are they with going to a site and being able to send their money there for savings for example or even requesting for a loan and be putting in a lot of their details online I, th I think i think people are beginning to notice that i mean generally in the fintech space it's better for you than just carrying cash right. i mean it's safer for you because because of the environment we live in you know we live in a space where you know security is a challenge so it's always better for you to you know use a solution that offers you some level of security and that's and that's what we 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 try to do make it just easy fast secure and there's been a lot of adoption because right. a lot of people just just basically for now call us and we have to you know, direct them, we have to, to the, website. To the yeah. website, go to the website. But even as easy as it is, you still find a lot of people who still need who still need help. And and based on that feedback we get from them, we then always try to improve daily. Yeah. So what are some of the benefits for people like why would you, for example, choose to save your money with like an online financial uh, bank or instead of going to a traditional bank like or why would you choose to get a loan from somewhere like Kudi Money mm. instead of just doing it like old school like Tunji would well, one of the things that, that we're doing right now is we're offering between 10 to 17 percent wow. annually and lot. and yeah it's a lot but I mean wait 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 wait, wait. Run, run that back again <laughs> um 10 to 17 percent yeah. That is close to treasury bills, really. Yes, exactly. And and so wait, you're offering that to normal people like exactly for as low as you can start saving with as low as one thousand. So who gets seventeen percent? Because I'm, I'm trying to. You're get, interested I mean, now okay, because okay, it's okay, so, so yeah. We, so basically, we have um, two types of um, savings. We have the the automatic savings, which is where you can save daily, you can save weekly, monthly towards a particular goal, mm -hmm. and we have fixed savings where you just you know, want to put out, you know, large But that's traditional, like fixed deposit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Just oh, like fixed okay. deposit. Okay. Yeah. So for a specified amount. For a specified okay. amount. So okay. if you save for, it depends. If you save for three months, six months, the interest gets higher the longer yes. you yeah. So you what's the average rate yeah. now, like with most banks? 3.8%. Wow. So that's, this is many times over that. Yeah. over that. You, and I doubt you're going to get 5% on any savings account. Yeah, exactly. And and what, what we're trying to do is... So this is what they talk about when they say fintech disrupting things, right? This <laughs> yeah. is disruption, right? I, exactly. I, not too many people know about this. And I, I, I've never really... The only reason why I, it makes sense for me to have a savings account is because the charges on the savings account are less. Right. Not necessarily because it's of the interest. A, the yeah, interest we've kind rates, of given yeah. up on Yeah, so um, hearing this... Is, this well, 70% is you will fly there, right? <laughs> fly. <laughs> exactly. And our aim is not just you know, giving you interest, um, just giving you more money. Our aim is just, again, to make you more financially responsible. But this is really cool. Thank you so much, Michael, for breaking it down to us about this whole world, about how we can get more savings so I can be a big person like Tunji. It's really, really helpful. Banks are beginning to merge with fintechs, partner right, with right. fintechs yeah. right now. So they, banks also understand that as the future. Some banks already even have those fintech spaces inside, inside in-house yeah, right. and they're innovating, you know, trying to... Yeah, I think for traditional yeah. banks as well, it's wise to sort of have like a collaborative yeah. a collaborative attitude to it because you don't want to get left behind. You mm -hmm. don't want to sort of look up in 20 years time and someone's eating your lunch. Yeah, exactly. So I think that we're seeing that a couple of them or the more interesting ones are already focusing on fintech and say, hey, I'm not going to be disrupted. I'm going to start disrupting myself or I'm going to exactly. at least stick close to the disruptor so that, yeah. you know, I'm not out of the loop when the mm -hmm. time comes. That's that's pretty cool. So do let us know how you've been um, using the fintech space. If you've been banking, if you've been using your USSD codes, if you have a mobile app, what the challenges you've had with it. And if you've been able to get money from those guys that say they give you loans via an app. Uh, do let us know. You can reach us via the handle is at Imdani TV. Hashtag analyze this. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere at Tunji Andrews. And also, uh, you can also reach me at Honey Ogunde. I'm always happy to get your messages or you can slide in my DMs on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. And uh, I think that's about it. 
<laughs> and Michael. Okay, um, you can reach us on kudimoney.com and on Twitter at um, kudimoneyng. Same with Facebook and Instagram. All right, guys, till next time. Have a great week. Catch you.